Hello Blazers, it's your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian. Hi guys, doing today? Welcome to a brand new video. In today's video, guys, we have an exclusive interview with a man who just escaped Russia. Hey, uh, remember you... me? I was drinking beer with him a couple of yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah. Educational video for all of you guys. And I'm a professional alcoholic, don't do this at home. This is my friend Max from uh, my hometown of Chelyabinsk. We have a video together, yeah, from years ago when we taste tested Russian uh, cheap beer. It was a fun one. And now Max is here in Georgia in Belize for obvious reasons. And today I want to just talk about what the experience of crossing the border between Russia and Georgia was like and how easy or how hard it was to get out of Russia. Because obviously with everything that's going on, the border situation was absolutely fucking insane. So cheers. Let's get into it. I almost just spilled this shit all over the place. <laughs> we're keeping the tradition alive. Every single time we record something, we ha we're drunk, so it's good. So the first thing I want to ask you is like, what was your ex escape plan, so to say? Like, what was your route to leave Russia? Okay, sorry. We don't have to start from here. 2011, you have like your hopes and dreams. You're 20 years old, doing your thing, and then Putin fucks you up. Right? Yeah, 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 sure. With the, all the protests. Story of my life, yeah. And, was, and then you thought like, oh, I have to leave with it. Shit's gonna get bad. Fast forward to 2014, you're like, oh, I have a lot of income. Then Putin fucks you over with the Crimea and all the shitty economic yeah. situation afterwards. Fast forward to uh, 2017, you have once again gained some more money, gained more income have more dreams yeah, yeah, yeah and then putin fucks you over with something once again yeah just google the fucking usd to ruble exchange ratio yeah, all yeah. the years every three years you like get get more income yeah, yeah. and it gets fucked over by yeah, putin yeah. because your income becomes comes zero. I guess what he's trying to do is like he's saying that, you know, a lot of people are shitting on Russians who just left because, you know, oh, whatever, these people are not like not actually against the regime or whatever. They're just, you know, fleeing because they're scared to get that, you know, they're going to be killed or whatever. I wouldn't say that's really true because there's a lot of people who have been against all of this shit for years, but, you Couldn't know. Afford. Yeah, yeah, you couldn't afford it, and every three years in Russia, there's literally like like an economical apocalypse. So even if you were already, you know, gathering some money to do it, you get fucked every now and then. So I guess it took for it to come to this uh, that he actually was like, "All right, I'm yeah, I'm going here like you know, butt ass naked with no yes. savings or anything." Yeah. So that's why I told you, like, it was no plan but i was always planning it kind of yeah way. i mean kind of the same for me pretty much like i was also ever since like 2014 when i was um, when i became politically politically aware you know i was like 16 then basically i always thought like i was about to leave russia and for me it took uh, you know for the uh, special build separation to start to uh, to actually do it but you know i'm in a different position i obviously have my youtube income and stuff like i can afford it but a lot of people were, are stuck in there still right now like our friends that we know as well and some people you know were just like fuck it and they went right now because right now you know is the time when uh, I mean less certainty that if the borders would be close or not okay so but how did you end up actually crossing the border uh, in the end like what was your route so I bought a ticket to mineral Vody. yeah that's uh, the Caucasus in region in Russia yeah because the train arrived there on 26 and if I bought a ticket to Vladikavkaz I would arrive on 27th and in this situation one day it, yeah, it matters was, and it would take me like couple of days to cross the border so 26 would be better than yeah, yeah. so i arrived at milani Vodem, get on the taxi on every small crossroad even on the village roads there were cops begging for money how many did you have like how many times did you have to bribe the police at least twice Public. so how much did you spend on those two uh on those two bribes i actually don't remember it was five or eight thousand rubles uh at in total, total. Yeah, in yeah yeah total. okay okay so it wasn't that bad but it was expected that there would be at least my five or ten more yeah yeah sure Oops, because we were driving not on the main roads we were driving like on the obscure like village roads like really small ones i heard of like stories that people had to pay like crazy amounts of money like 200 300 thousand or something to cross to get to the border the taxis like you know people driving people to the border actually took more and more money i mean I, it got insane i blame moscow it guys <laughs> these fuckers have a lot of money and they pay. They kind of made all the cops expect that yeah. everyone had this kind of yeah. money. So you you would say you got in early and you didn't have to pay that much because of that? No, I just returned to Mineral Nevode. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going back and I'm hopping on the train. I wanted to cross with three guitars, a computer sure. yeah. and a monitor, 27 inch monitor. And I thought, how could I cross it on foot? And I thought, okay, I I'm just Google on Russian Craigslist, a shopping cart. And I found out that it's amazing old lady i have the picture of her i called her like do you have this uh, card she said yeah okay i was like i'm getting to your town to vladika at 8 a.m where do i find you she's like oh i'll meet you at the station it's okay yeah, yeah. i was like oh, 
She's meeting me at the station, really good. She met me at the station, drove me to her garage. Here is a car, do, do, do you like it? I was like, yeah, sure. So I have to find a small truck to move all my stuff to the border or something on yeah. the taxi. She's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm getting you to the, to the traffic jam near the border. And no cops will stop me because I'm old. <laughs> okay. Wait, I mean, you mean she was driving? Yeah. Oh, nice. She, yeah. She, she was a, Bro, that grandma is a keeper. <laughs> yeah. And we saw one uh, time on the border, so near the border, so driving, and there were police there, and they wanted to stop us, but then they saw that it's a granny driving, yeah. and the numbers were the Ossetian, and they were like, oh, no. Okay. No, they're not stopping there. Yeah, yeah. Rainy. Your driver has street cred, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's good. She took you there and... Uh... I packed all my stuff to the car, pushed it for a couple hundred meters, and then some Armenian guys were behind me and they're like, Oh, dude, we have really, really heavy bags. Can you put it in your car and yeah. push it all together? And I was yeah. like, yeah, sure. Because all my stuff were way too heavier than their bags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got a free push. To the <laughs> yeah, so they just pushed your shit. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, just for context, the lines there at the border, I mean, I think right now as well, are like crazy. The lines at the border between Russia and Georgia were like 10 to 20 kilometers and there's like huge traffic jams, people staying there for days. So how long did it take you, you know, being in that line to get to the border? This granier actually dropped me off at maybe 10 a.m., maybe 9 a.m. Yeah. So I went to the Russian side of the border at 1 a.m., maybe 2 a.m. next day, I think. Okay. So after that, I went to the neutral zone and I left the neutral zone at 5 p.m. the next day. So I was there the whole night, the whole morning, and in the evening, I kind of went out on the mm -hmm. Georgian side. Less than two days, yeah. Yeah, when I saw this motherfucker for the first time, when he just arrived from the border, his face was like red. He looked like he went through a desert. It was wild. <laughs> sure. Did you get to, I mean, as far as I understand, like, you know, the situation at the border is so crazy. A lot of people already describe it as like a humanitarian catastrophe, you know, that people are in there with like children, people are not getting like food, water, or, you know, basic necessities, you know, like, what was your experience? Did you get to sleep or eat? Like, how, how did you get by, you know, spending two fucking days in a Line to the border. I don't understand. Like first, I bought a, a lot of stuff, but not that many. Yeah, as it turned out. I bought like five liters of water, maybe four and a half liters of water, some snacks, some protein bars. But then the most fucked up part was the actual neutral zone, because there was no shops, no toilets, no buildings. Yeah. There was one building over there. It was some World War Two bunker. It's the actual, you can see the, uh, the okay. for the defense of the Caucasus in 1941, 1945, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so on. I've been, like, I crossed the land border from Georgia to Armenia recently, and, like, being the neutral zone, it had a duty-free, like, store, it had a toilet and stuff. Technically, yeah, these, these, these like, areas are not supposed to, like, house billions of fucking people, so you should have logged it, bro. Straight up. <laughs> my, my, my phone was dying. So I imagine if the line was, like, this huge and there was so many people, you know, trying to pass through and everything there's probably people like fighting or something in the, yeah. in the line probably did you see a lot of that like what was it like there were a lot of conflicts in the line but basically some people tried to sneak uh, in front of the line of course yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's very russian cutting in line that's very yeah. russian yeah <laughs> and the best way they could do it is actually behind the truck so the truck is moving <laughs> yeah, towards yeah. Georgia yeah, yeah. And, and you don't see them behind the yeah, truck yeah and the so. people <laughs> are on the right side and you don't see who's that's cutting so... on the, in front of the truck that's fucked but in the end, we kind of stopped them. Everybody organized, yeah. we kind of booed them off. So we said like, fuck you, we're not letting you in. We all know who you are, so get yeah, yeah, fucked. Yeah. Go in uh, yeah. to the beginning. Were people even talking to each other in the line? Like, I'm just trying to imagine it. Like, it's not like a fucking bar hangout, you know, where you're just talking about life or whatever. But I mean, if you're in a line... it was. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, I mean, if you're in a line... <laughs> I wonder if motherfuckers were drinking in the line straight up, like... Maybe some were, but I don't think that a lot of people got that. 
with them. What would you say the overall vibe was of everybody in the line? Like, were people, did, did everybody feel super like anxious and like lost and stuff like that? Or mostly people were tired as fuck. In the night, we were mostly like micro sleeping. So then you're like, yeah. Close your eyes, you see some shit. You don't know if you're sleeping or if something is happening right now. Yeah, you sleeping. You, how did you, did you even get to sleep? And if you did, like, how? You were not in a car. Like, I don't understand. How did you sleep if you were not in a car? Sleeping wasn't sleeping at all yeah i was micro sleeping like for two minutes like just like on your cart like laying yeah. laying down as well yeah I I, I I i mean it's so fucking insane i mean i actually i actually can't even imagine like just being on my like on my feet for two days straight not sleeping wild you know it makes me it makes me uh happy that i moved <laughs> earlier you know that's <laughs> that's one thing for sure was it easy to cross the border like did they question you or anything every guard was laughing at me because they didn't expect the guy with a card with free guitars ah, okay yeah, yeah so they're like even the russian ones also was like holy shit what the fuck is this and so yeah, yeah free guitar sound like nice going out to georgia to have some fun with yeah. My guitars. yeah yeah so you would say it was pretty easy easy yeah. to cross the border okay fair it wasn't easy for guys who were born in the caucasus yeah yeah i've heard so of that all the guys from Ossetia, chechnya and our republics from russian side have to stay for double check or something yeah, yeah. and have to live in the same conditions but as we were yeah for five more days yeah but at least they had a house and the duty okay. free of that yeah, yeah. so it's a little bit easier but still not it's good that you got through quick but uh so when you cross the border did they have like taxis waiting there at uh, that point there or shit tons of taxis all yeah there. so i got the best one this amount of russians coming in is a big big news for georgia so yeah, yeah of course and a big political topic so that's why they had a lot of reporters um the cameras uh outside of the uh, of the border yeah i guess you can find some news yeah, footage of him on the news with me. Yeah, on georgian news <laughs> so you crossed the border and uh i guess you took like a you got into like a van with yeah, like with like seven eight other people, people some, yeah. six other people yeah so uh do you want to tell the story <laughs> what your driver did <laughs> yeah i know that about georgian people so they're really good they're really friendly they help you it's uh, not only about georgian people armenians also like really really help you a lot my driver went to piss on some stuff i was like oh i, I need to like i need to piss also so, so I, <laughs> coming to the tour like like a couple of seconds later yeah in him and he's already blazing it hard and i was like oh shit <laughs> welcome to georgia motherfucker yeah, like yeah, yeah. perfect yeah yeah and i was like oh shit he's like do you want some i was like no i'm not smoking but i'll have some for my friends <laughs> and he gave me like a lot of <laughs> w dude yeah that's that's insane that's like this motherfucker literally crossed the border from russia to georgia and like three three minutes into yeah. it he's already like offered weed it's insane <laughs> All right, so yeah, the story was great. So success story, made it through. Uh, great, you know, you're not being sent to Ukraine, but uh, I have like only small L's with, uh, with the police, like giving them. Yeah, giving them bribes, but yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do. I guess what I want to ask is like overall, what do you plan to do in policing now? He's not like an IT guy or like a YouTuber like me, you know. He like left his job in Russia and stuff yeah. for this, pretty much. My thought process is like this: so there are a lot of Russians coming in here. There are a lot of foreigners already here yeah there are a lot of georgians here and they all need to party and do stuff <laughs> okay and they all need some musicians here to entertain them yeah. because there there will be a shortage of musicians so that's why if you're, if you're looking for a bass player in bdc yeah, yeah. Contact me. hit his instagram no cap i mean i've literally been with this guy in bars recently and he literally comes up to like pretty much anybody or like any musician and he asks like you guys want a bass player and stuff so yeah <laughs> I respect the hustle. All right, well, I mean, uh, I want to say, you know, uh, good luck to you and your endeavors. I'm really happy you're here, you know, obviously, because fucking hell, like, you know, it sucks that some of my friends can't leave. Shout outs to you. Uh, hopefully, you guys did enjoy this video. If you guys did, please make sure to slap the like on it, have a drink with us, whatever. And uh, Cheers, yeah. here's to peace and here's to uh, decent, <laughs> our, uh, de us, us having a decent future, hopefully. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Nice. <laughs>